artificial intelligence um, is really any computer implementation that mimics cognitive functions, such as learning or problem solving. Um, it includes things even like simple decision trees programmed um, by hand, which include a bunch of if and then statements. Um, and it's really, um, you know, in anything where a computer is interacting, where, where a human being. Uh, machine learning is a, a subset of artificial intelligence. I mean, everyone uses machine learning every single day. Um, it's behind Google searches. Um, it runs spam filters. Um, it gets used every time you unlock your iPhone with face recognition. And they rely a lot on, well, on what we call ensemble methods, um, which is basically the wisdom of the crowds applied to prediction bots. Um, so, so sort of the underlying ideas are that one model might not give you great predictions, but if you use a bunch of different models and you combine all their predictions, you get better predictions. I'd say that we view machine learning at Dimensiono as a, another tool to make our day-to-day uh, -day implementation process more efficient, more scalable, um, at least uh, when it comes to investments. As you mentioned, we have other applications of machine learning uh, throughout the firm. But when it comes to investments, we view it as a uh, tool to make uh, the implementation more efficient, not a tool to identify, not a crystal ball for returns. When people talk about machine learning, uh, one image many of us have in our heads is that the machine is making all the decisions, but actually there are still a lot of decisions in the hands of empiricists, the people setting up the models and running uh, them to get to predictions with machine learning. And it's something that shouldn't be uh, underestimated when we evaluate the outcomes of such prediction models, especially when it comes to asset pricing. Have, a, have always had a very strong focus on trading costs and implementation, and that has led us to actually uh, develop massive uh, TIG data set proprietary uh, dimensional, which now hosts over 40 terabytes of data. Talk about big data. Uh, and uh, every day, this data set gets expanded with uh, about 100 million new trade records and 600 million new quote updates. Uh, and uh, when you deal with such huge, really big data, uh, you have to develop, and we have developed, efficient ways to organize these data into a file system. And also you need efficient ways to actually pull this data, retrieve this data in order to run analysis on it, and efficient ways to uh, also aggregate the results and run statistical tests on those results. Um, so that's one example of uh, the dimensional having used and continuing to use big data to inform um, how we trade in the marketplace, how we blend in terms of sizing, pricing, um, routing, and timing of our orders. And our proprietary trading algorithms are another example of very sophisticated um, software that interacts with the markets in real time and makes decisions based on what it observes in the marketplace. So it's another wonderful example of where we use machines fed with real time data for efficient decisions in a very large scale across many, many markets around the globe. Most of it is done through algorithmic training at Dimensional, uh, but we always, always have human oversight. And I think that it's pretty clear that the literature that exists now um, has largely ignored implementation issues. And this is actually a pet peeve of mine. We're a practical field, and we would be so much more useful for the world if we actually treated these implementation orders, which are first order issues in the real world, um, if, if we took them seriously. Um, and ignoring the implementation issues when you're running these machine learning algorithms I think has a huge impact on the sorts of inferences that you draw. When you ignore implementation issues, um, you can get answers that you know are false. And, and, and it's really important to include these uh, in your things as well. Some papers claim that if you use predictions from based on machine learning to uh, form a, a forecast for returns and then you sort uh, stocks into high and low forecasted returns and form portfolios based, based on that, you're going to get 2% per month average return or 3% per month or 40% per year, huge numbers. But when uh, other academics have started looking under the hood, obviously you see you're talking about when details are provided, you're talking about equally weighted portfolio, deciles of stocks uh, with monthly rebalancing and turnover per month of about 100%. As soon as you read that, as a practitioner, you know, you uh, trading costs could be quite large. So 
implementation costs very, very important to be taken into account. And one interesting kind of real world uh, example of that is uh, there is an index out there that tracks the performance of hedge funds that uh, incorporate uh, AI uh, in their investment process. And this index started in uh, January of 2010. Since then to the end of April this year, the annualized compound return of that index has been 12.3%. Mark, do you happen to know what's the return on the S&P 500 over that period? Higher or lower? Over 12.3, I'm gonna go higher over the last 10 years. Yep, you're correct. From uh, 2010 to uh, April of this year, 14.7%. So um, it doesn't seem at least that those hedge funds uh, focusing on AI have been able to even get to a return of the S&P 500 over that period, let alone outperform it. But again, bringing it back to basics, as Robert said, implementation costs are very important and also, we believe that uh, competition in global capital markets brings a lot of the information uh, derived differently, either through machine learning, AI technologies, or through general kind of sources like financial data statements, prices, current prices. All of that is incorporated in uh, the valuation framework through prices today and company fundamentals. And as a result, uh, nothing else can get you a better uh, um, idea or model of expected returns than what you already have with current prices uh, embedded in the process. That's why we continue to stress the importance of using up-to-date market prices in every step of the implementation process from portfolio design to portfolio management to trading. So I guess I, you know, as, as, as uh, optimistic I am about AI being able to teach us something about the cross section and what are the important drivers. Um, I, I do think, in terms of, you know, making outrageous promises, um, I, it's never AI is never going to deliver, um, you know, truly outrageous returns because of competition and the tyranny of arithmetic that um, the av evaluated average market return is going to be the market, and so. Um, for, for every, you know, extra dollar that your magic, the, the best AI system in the world could produce, it's having to take it from someone else who's not holding the market. And on average, they're going to have to have market returns. Um, and there's just a lot of competition in this space. And we just, we, we don't see these kind of, um, you know, super high, um, too good to be true opportunities because of equilibrium and market forces. There are certainly some claims in the literature about, um, big improvements from market timing. Um, but here, the issue for me is that when we're talking about the time series, when you're predicting monthly returns, you really only have a few hundred observations that you're fitting to. And there's just a tremendous amount of freedom, degrees of freedom in how you construct these predictors. Um, and in general, even without these sophisticated techniques, um, it's way too easy to find things that seem to predict returns um, in the data. Um, and um, so I just, I, I think this is a much harder problem um, and one that is more prone to overfitting. And so here I'm, I'm sort of more skeptical that there are gonna be um, big gains coming from machine learning. Um, I also have been trying to figure out one of the papers that claims, um, you know, big gains to time in the market says their method methods, which are quite sophisticated, um, don't, that they, they basically can't find up with any way to, to time momentum, um, which I've been trying to figure out why that is, because momentum is the strategy in the literature, which there are sort of the strongest claims about how important it is to time that strategy. Um, and so um, I don't understand how some of these claims on the market um, using these techniques are not finding the things that um, the literature and practitioners have already um, claimed work for this uh, other strategy, which they claim to be timeable. But I'm not, you know, particularly convinced that we have come anywhere close to a right answer from these machine learning implementations on trying to select factors. Going back to the idea of machine learning there, it's been there a long time. I've been there for decades. This is just, you guys described some examples of that. The benefits of it, what you said there, Sabina, it makes you more efficient, faster, reduces errors. Uh, less expensive at the end of the day. Uh, there's no evidence of the crystal ball that we've seen in any of the academic research or even as a 
practitioner of somebody to outsmart markets because of machine learning. But technology is moving fast, and we'll just uh, keep employing what we do here at Dimensional and keep our eyes out on it uh, from a research perspective. So that's what I took away from today. Anything each one of you want to add to that? Robert, I'll start with you. Uh, I agree. It's an invaluable tool, uh, just like the computer is. Um, I can't imagine uh, functioning without machine learning, um, but it's still only as good as the application, and it's not uh, its not a magic wand. It, 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 it makes it easier and more efficient to do, um, to, to implement thoughtful processes. Savina, last thoughts? Machine learning methods are methods for making processes more efficient, very capable of doing that, and we look forward to applying them even more throughout our investment process.